So the first was good. The second segment on UMass Jackback will be good as always. We're going to talk about the Eisenberg School of Management here located in Amherst, Massachusetts at UMass. We have three astounding experts and renowned. Michelle Woodward, Haley Wicker, and Brennan Hofstis. Now, Michelle, I understand you're an expert on the matter. Um, I am an expert in the matter in that I read the article that we're going to be speaking about. Mm -hmm. um, and basically the writer, it was in the opinion section of the Amherst Wire, and her, um, she basically was talking about how Eisenberg's really exclusive and how frustrating that can be if you're not in the school. And she talked about a couple different things. She talked about how um, it's really like daunting to go into Eisenberg, but she also talked about the resources that Eisenberg has that other schools don't have. And then in particular, her experience was that she went to a career fair and she was invited to apply for a job and she couldn't get in online because she wasn't an Eisenberg student to apply for the job. And that kind of set her off and made her really frustrated. And so she went through this whole process of interviewing people and wrote this article. So she gets the sense that UMass is playing favorites? Um, she was, I mean, she acknowledged in the article that the reason why Eisenberg has all these advantages is because they had a really large donation. Mm -hmm. And so she did like acknowledge that and that was, she got a lot of feedback from people um, through like Facebook and other things. And a lot of people were saying that she doesn't understand like the only reason is because the alumni gave like a lot of money and that's why they talked about like some of the comments talked about like the new life sciences building how that didn't happen until there was an alumni donation so it's like no one's fault umass isn't playing favorites because mm -hmm. when you get a donation you have to like use it for what the donor mm -hmm. wants you to so Haley, do you agree with this poor girl or do you disagree with this crooked troublemaker? Well, I do sympathize with her that she was invited, like Eisenberg Career Fair was specifically for Eisenberg and they said it was open to all majors, you didn't have to be in Eisenberg. Mm -hmm. But then she was offered like an interview and she had to do that through Chase Career Services. So they have, everyone has access to um, experience online, which is like the um, job and internship search engine. But Eisenberg has their own, which is Chase I guess it's called Chase. Mm -hmm. but, Not um, associated with the bank, right? No. Associated with the alumni. The family. <laughs> family, yeah. So what she had to do in order to get the um, interview that she was offered was log on through Chase and like sign up for a time, but she couldn't do that because she wasn't an Eisenberg student. Mm -hmm. So I do sympathize, sympathize with her that she was invited. They said it was open to all majors, but then it was still like this exclusivity that she couldn't get the interview that she was offered. But at the same time, I don't know. I, I understand, like, she was very upset about it, but I think the article should have focused more on what we can do to help other schools, like, have this, like, have similar advantages, like, maybe work on, like, an SBS, like, career services or whatever, because um, the article did say that Chase has six full-time employees for the 4,000, 5,000 students in Eisenberg, whereas the career services that's for the rest of the university has three full-time staff for the entire student, so it is, mm -hmm. they definitely have, um, more focus per student. So. Mm -hmm. Now, Breda, do you, do you think this is an appropriate um, inequality huff that we're making? Or do you think that if you, it's your program, you should be able to offer what you want to who you want? I mean, definitely, like, it's, like, I guess the way you put it, like, it's their program. They can do what they want with it. Mm -hmm. And there is, like, an inequality. But I remember in the article, there was talk, it was like an English major and they quoted him saying like, when I go out and find a job on my own, it's like even a step above the career because I did it without help. Like, yeah, I, I don't have the resources, but I can still find a job like with the same caliber. So there is inequality, but there's like, with that, there's a chance for people who aren't a part of the Eisenberg to like rise above and meet that bar. So, so that guy's looking at it as though it's training wheels and he's saying, I can do this without it. Oh, that's interesting. Do you, what, Michelle, what are your I, thoughts on that? Uh, well, the thing about this is I'm in Eisenberg, but I'm also um, in the journalism 
program and there's pros and cons to both so people are always telling me like oh you're so lucky you have this nice building and you have the Chase Career Center and yeah like that is really nice but it's nothing compared to the support I get in a smaller major in mm -hmm. journalism like yes we have these full-time employees in the Chase Career Center and that's great and I'm like really proud to be part of Eisenberg but the most help I've received is actually going to my advisors who've had me in class, who know me by name, who know things about me and who can like support me much better that in the journalism department. So I think as an outsider, maybe like journalism or maybe Eisenberg is just this like perfect place with these perfect amenities, but don't discount like the things you have in your own program as well, I guess. That's true. And uh, coming from someone who like actually took advantage of the UMass as a whole career services, I've gone to them so many times. Someone that she interviewed in the article said that she wished that her college like had similar things as the Chase Career Center and she said, well, you, do you know that like UMass has one? She said, well, that's kind of out of the way. That's what the student said. And mm -hmm. like, you can have the same benefits as the Chase Career Center if you like seek them out. Like you have to make a point. It's not just like gonna be there for you, like offering you this help. You have like either way. Even if you have the Chase Career Center, you have to like make that effort and go there and like talk to them and like yeah. then you see the benefits. It's not just gonna like come to you. It's not because they have the Chase Career Center they automatically like oh we're giving out jobs today. Like here you go. Like they still have to make the same effort like everyone else does. I I mean I agree with that because I went in. One time, and it wasn't like the line was out the door. No, there's never it, there was yeah. no one there. So how like how can you make a huff when ours isn't being utilized? Yeah, and they were upset about the Eisenberg Career Center, but then you're not even utilizing the one that you have available to you. It's just like, come on. It's kind of like, I mean, I don't want to discredit this girl because she has some good points, but it's kind of childish. It's just saying that, hey, you have that, I want that, even if you're, you don't even want it to begin with. Um, I think the girl, um, her name is Rose, she wrote the article, we invited her to come on but she couldn't make it. Um, she commented on the article and said like she thinks that like a lot of the things she said were misconstrued, like she wasn't trying to bash Eisenberg and she actually did get the job with Macy's, that's who she got the interview with. And she used the Chase Career Center, so mm -hmm. it worked out for her in the end but I think a lot of people took that really seriously who were in Eisenberg they were really like personally offended by that. Mm -hmm. But I will say right before we back, wrap up, I think it's um, unreasonable for Eisenberg students to pretend that they were surprised by this article at all. Like she came out and didn't said it, but like people say it all the time and Eisenberg is booed every single year at graduation. So if you're like sitting around in some bubble thinking that people like Eisenberg students, you're crazy. So like she was kind of just speaking for the people that speak every day about it anyways. Yeah. Well, Rose, <laughs> we appreciate what you had to offer. We thank you for speaking your opinion. This was ours. Maybe you agree with it. Maybe you don't. Not likely. Up next, we're going to do some word associations. So when I say UMass Jackback, you think what? Yeah, yeah. Thank goodness. <laughs> thank goodness. All right, stick with us.